Okay guys, so in this video, we're gonna build some dynamic URL routing and templates so we can actually go to these customer pages right here. And as we click on a customer page, we want one template to render different pages. So right now my URL just gives me the customer page, but what I want is the ability to pass in the customer ID into the template and pull up the same template with the associated customer's uh, data. So how this is gonna happen is we're actually gonna make this URL dynamic here. So what we're gonna do is give it the ability to, again, pass in the data like this, so the customer's ID. And when we get that customer's ID in the URL route, what we're gonna do now is make this uh, view dynamic. So we can actually get the primary key. So we'll actually pass in the ID or primary key as another parameter. So we can go ahead and query the customer by doing something like this. So we'll do customer.objects.get and then we'll set the ID value to whatever is in this primary key. So that's how a customer is queried and then the data will be rendered out in the template. So the template will be dynamic and will be the same template for multiple customers. So how this is done is by using these angle brackets right here and we're gonna do str colon and we're gonna give it the name of PK. Now, whatever I give this name is what we have to call it here. So I can call this PK underscore and then just test. So if I did something like that, what I would have to do is throw in that parameter and do that. And now this URL is dynamic. So if we actually go ahead and visit the page now, we'll actually see that this is gonna work. So we don't have a customer with the ID of one. So if I go to my admin panel and find a particular customer, we'll actually be able to query it. So let's just do this, log in, and let's see what kind of customers we have and find a real ID. So we're getting this issue because that ID was passed in, but there's no customer with the ID of one that we passed into the template. So we passed in one, so let's find a real customer. Let's get John Doe and John Doe's ID is four. So if we were to pass in four now, that would work. So no data is being rendered because we're not actually doing anything with this. And I believe Peter's ID was two. So two and four work, but none of the other IDs work. So what's happening now is this STR and these angle brackets is Django's way of letting us make this dynamic. And we can actually use, if I pull up the documentation, we can actually use uh, INT for integer and we can also use a slug field. And I prefer to use the STR because sometimes I don't have an integer. So if we did the integer, it would just be like that. So INT and they call theirs year and you can actually chain these. And here's a slug field. So I stick to STR because sometimes I do want string values in there. But uh, now when we get the customer, when we pass in this, uh, when, the, when we pass in this parameter through that dynamic URL, we're able to get it in our view throw it in and get the customer and then we can actually just go ahead and query that customer and I'll throw it into the context dictionary. So we'll say customer is gonna be customer here and we'll just throw that into the template. So once I get that information in the template, I can actually go ahead and pass in that data. So let's just do this. Let's go to our template and I have our customer template right here. And let's get, uh, let's go ahead and actually get some of the customer's um, orders. So I'll go ahead and query those right now. So we'll just do orders is gonna equal to customer.order underscore set dot all. And let's fix this. And if you're confused with the, what this does right here, I actually covered this in a few videos back. So this is our way of querying the customer's child object from our models field. So that just grabs all the orders and we'll also pass those into the context here. And now I can actually put this into the table. So right here is where we'll use our template tags and we'll just create a quick loop and actually output that. So we'll say for order in orders and we'll just close this out and finish up that table row. So end for Okay, so for each item, we're gonna want the product name, 
the category, date created, and status. So let's just do this and we'll do, and I'm gonna pull up my models field so I actually remember what those were called in there. Move that here and we'll do models.py. So here's my order object. So we'll do product, so we'll have to just chain that. So order.product and I'll just paste this in, copy and paste this a few more times here. And then we just need category. So in that case, because a uh, category is actually the product, we have to change it. We have to chain this. So we do order dot product. So now we're in here and then we can do category. So dot category and then we do date created. So I'll just copy that and then the status. And then I'll just finish this up with the uh, with the buttons and then we'll make those buttons work later. So status, um, we'll start right here. We'll just do, we'll just do a link here. So, and then we'll just set href to blank and then we'll just copy and paste this. So we'll give it a name right now. And this will be update. And if I copy this and throw this down below, this will give us the ability to remove the item. So let's go ahead and actually see that data actually be output. So if I go to this template, okay, so here we go. We have our customer's orders. Now, if I go to the customer with the ID of four, this changes up. So we're getting the same template, but we're rendering out each individual customer's data. So I'm gonna finish this video up by actually outputting the email, total, total orders, and just styling this page. Okay, so because we already passed in the customer's template, uh, putting out the email and phone should be very easy. So we're just gonna use that template tag and do customer.email and then we're just gonna do the phone number and we'll do customer.phone. Okay, so the last thing we need to do is just output the number of orders. And to do that, I'll just throw in one more parameter here and we will make this more dynamic with a model method, but that's gonna be for a later video. So in this case, we'll just do uh, order underscore count and that's going to be set to orders.count because we already have it right here. So let's just go ahead and pass that in and render that. Okay, so to put that in the template, where is our total orders here? So we want to throw that in to this H1 tag. So we'll just do, oh, pretty do the template tag orders.count and there we go. So I'll just quickly style these buttons and if you're following along with this course, you should be familiar with how we use bootstrap here. So we're gonna do class is gonna be btn, btn-sm for a small button. And because of the update, um, because this is an update button, I'm gonna do info. And for the remove button, I'm gonna do the class of danger because I want that to be red. So We'll just do danger and that should complete our styling. Okay, so perfect, that's what we needed. And in the next video, I'll actually handle the CRUD functionality. So uh, we'll actually be able to update and remove certain orders and work with our customers.